It's the return of a beloved global icon. If you like sporty cars, if you like hot hatches, it's almost the dictionary definition of the word hot hatch, at least here in the States. I'm talking about the Volkswagen GTI. This is the Mark 8, shush, or eighth generation GTI. And it has a lot going for it. It also has a lot working against it. What's not working against it is the driving experience. This GTI whips. It has more power than the outgoing Mark 7 car. This makes 241 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque from the fourth iteration of Volkswagen's EA888 engine. That's a two-liter turbo four. Infotainment keeps messing up. We'll get to that, trust me. Backing up the engine, this car has a six-speed manual gearbox with one of the best Volkswagen clutches I've felt in some time because I can actually feel it, and that's a very good thing. You can also opt for a seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox in this as well, and the dual-clutch is quicker to 60. Like I said, the driving experience is pretty great. Steering feel is pretty proper. This car has a limited slip, an electronic limited slip diff up front. It also has brake-based torque vectoring, so it's an extremely neutral hot hatch. You go into corners, you get on the power early, it does some wizardry under the hood, uh, and it just, it just goes. It pulls hard out of corners. There's no turbo lag to speak of. The engine feels torquey and fun and sprightly and entertaining, and everything up to that point is very much GTI, all that you want. A better driving experience than the car before it, and that's what's happening here. A better driving experience. Now on the outside, it's a good looking car too. I think they did a nice job with the updated version of the GTI here, the Mark 8. I like, I like the nose. I like the light bar that runs across the nose. I think that's a neat touch. The headlights look good. This paint is not for me, but it's fun. It's a fun color. Um, it will look good in a sea of just boring cars out on the road. I like the look of the wheels on this one and all that stuff. I think the rear end is styled nicely. It's not a huge departure from the GTI, but I don't think we want it to be. It's a familiar, sh it's almost like they're not gonna involve the 911 that far, looks wise. Yeah, it changes, but it's still clearly a 911, and I think the GTI should be more of the same, and that's what's happened here. Now slide inside, and you have comfortable seats. And that's kind of where the positives of the inside end, and that's not all of them. The steering wheel feels good. Um, the shift action is nice and smooth. The shift lever itself is oddly chunky, but I like the throwback nod to the slight golf ball texture on the one side of it. The gauge cluster in front of me, digital gauge cluster, looks really nice. It's crisp and easy to read, and you can change to different views and layouts. I like that. Um, there's a honeycomb pattern in the background. It looks kind of cool. Slide over to the infotainment screen, and that is also a nice display. The actual user experience, though, inside the cabin, it's dog shit. It's not good. It's all the physical buttons have been replaced by these capacitive touch and slider buttons, which are just the worst thing to put in a car. Some people out there are like, oh, I like it. It's the, it's, no, 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 no. Remember when Honda took the volume button away and then everybody screamed at them and then they brought it back? That is what is going to happen here. It's, some of the buttons on the steering wheel seem to work okay, but then to get to menus, there's some crappy button options you have to go through to press things, and it's this weird pseudo haptic feedback, and it's just not good, and it kind of kills the soul of the car, and that's a huge shame because everything else about it, I really enjoy. The driving experience really is great. It's, it's a fun to drive, fun to hustle machine. You can heel tow it easily. The throttle response is nice. The brakes feel great. All of that stuff is good. There's grip. There's good steering feel. I mean, this is still a fun to drive car, but you, you interact with the infotainment, the radio, the climate control, all that stuff on a daily basis. You're not going to be driving twi twisty roads on a daily basis. But, so, it all needs to be good, and that especially needs to be good. User experience is very important in a vehicle. 
and to be let down by it on a car like this is a huge bummer because it's priced well too. The base GTI, which is the GTI S, starts just over, ooh, Grand National. The base GTI, like squirrel, um, the base GTI, the GTI S starts just over $30,000. Um, then you have the SE, and this is a fully loaded top spec Autobahn. I think these start at 38, the SE's 35. For that mid-grade SE, you jump to a nicer, um, I think it's actually a Harman Kardon, yeah, Harman Kardon sound system. I just looked over, this one has it. You, you jump to a nicer sound system and a few other things. Then the Autobahn is where you get into the latest version of the adaptive suspension in this. So when you change driving modes, it's continuously adaptive so that if you're in sport, it wants to keep the ride sporty. If you're in comfort, it wants to keep the ride comfortable. It's continuously monitoring the driving experience and adapting. It's not just doesn't go to like, oh, comfort, stay here. It's moving and adjusting as you drive, which is really neat. But you have to climb to the Autobahn to get it, and you're at at least 38 to do so. And then you're bumping up a few thousand dollars shy of Golf R at that point. And then, you know, now you have a 300 horsepower all-wheel drive monster on your your hands. Um, FJ40. Um, so that's my big gripe. And sometimes I have to work hard to find faults with the car. With this car, I didn't. And that's a huge shame because everybody loves the Volkswagen GTI. I think we're going to go look back on the eighth generation, the Mark 8, and be like, oh, remember when they did all that dumb shit in the cabin? I think it's gonna be some of that, which is, again, a huge problem because the driving experience is really fun. It's really entertaining. And especially, you know, for the price. The, the GTI was always this, like, lightly disguised, it was a sporty hatch, a hot hatch, and then on the inside, you could get a near Audi-like experience um, on the inside if you optioned it well. Or you could go in a different direction and get just super fun, affordable, charming with like the, the bright plaid seats, the golf ball shifter, and some other things. You can still get plaid seats on this, but they're like toned down, they're muted. This has leather seats, which are fine. I don't love leather seats, but it's hard to find not leather or you know faux leather these days. Um, like a, a Golf GTI should still embrace, you know, some cloth plaid seats. That's rock the hell out of those, make them bright, tartan seats, whatever. Um, give me a golf ball shifter. The quirkiness in the Volkswagen brand has seems to have faded. They've gotten more serious. Like let the Audis be serious because then you're paying serious money for them. With Volkswagen, there should be some fun there. When the Beetle went away, it's like, it, it like takes the soul of the brand with it. And then when something comes back, it injects more soul back into it. So maybe when the, the micro bus comes, the camper van or whatever, whatever they're gonna call it, the ID buzz, um, when that comes back, maybe that'll inject some more funk back into the brand. And then the mid-cycle refresh for this car or the Mark 9 version, um, maybe that will bring back some of the joy, the entertainment, the charm, which I think is a big word I keep coming back to on the GTI. But like I said, driving experience? I mean, that was just, I didn't even shift it. That was all third gear, hard pull, um, almost to the 6,500 RPM red line. It's a blast to drive. It feels great, it feels planted, it hauls down speed easily, sight lines are fine. All that stuff is great. Seating position is fine. It's just the user experience is so bad that it just, it, it's hard to shine a light on the rest of it. I mean, and that's a big bummer. If you can live with this, if you think it's fine, like, yeah, you plug in Apple CarPlay, but you still got to deal with some of the buttons and all that stuff, but it's, it is what it is, right? Hopefully we keep the driving experience or even improve it in the next gen and then revert and fix all the infotainment going forward. The screens look and work well, the, like the visual aspect of the screens, but the actual interface between them sucks ass.